The last few months in Durham has meant that our heating is now back on. And with autumn, we see a heat pump performing at its very best. But now we're seeing snow in the northeast and negative temperatures. I think it's fair to say that autumn is over and winter is here. So how has the heat pump been performing over the last few months? Have we been comfortable as the days and nights get cooler? What about costs? If we were on a standard tariff, how would this compare to an efficient gas boiler? But on Octopus Agile, how does it compare and what about our emissions? I'll try and talk you through all this in this video today, giving you efficiency or coefficient of performance or COP for a two-year-old Valent Aerotherm Plus and comparing that to our last couple of years of data after all the tinkering that I've done with settings uh, since living with this system. So let's get straight to it. We started heating this year near the end of September and I took a meter reading of our uh, electricity use for the heat pump and our, our from the heat meter for the heat pump on the 22nd of September. I am reliant on direct readings from the heat meter and the electricity meter rather than having automatic meter readings logging to a website or to a spreadsheet or a system like Open Energy Monitor. But my readings are at least still a little bit worthwhile. Um, so after that 22nd of September, I've been taking readings almost weekly up to the end of November. So nine and a half weeks uh, later, we have stats for this autumn. Since the 22nd of September, we've used 736 kilowatt hours of electricity for all our heat and our hot water. And that's delivered 2,769 kilowatt hours of heat over that time which means an average efficiency or COP of 3.76. So what does that mean for costs? Well, the average octopus rate at my postcode at the moment is currently 26.58 pence per kilowatt hour. So to run our heat pump over this last nine and a half weeks, it would have cost us 195 pounds and 62 pence. So how would that compare with a gas boiler? If we assume the gas boiler was running at a high efficiency, at 95% efficiency, and we assume we are burning gas at Octopus's standard gas tariff of 6.82 pence per kilowatt hour, then to deliver that same heat to give us the same comfort, this would have cost 198 pounds and 78 pence. So three pounds and 15 pence more expensive with gas. Take that gas boiler. Well, there's not much in it. Many boilers would have less efficiency than 95% which could tip things more in favor, well, which would tip things more in favor of the heat pump. And some heat pumps also may be less efficient, making boilers cheaper, but also some heat pumps will be much more efficient. And you can look at the data on the Open Energy Monitor website, and you can see loads of examples where heat pumps are much more efficient than what we've had. And that would mean substantial savings on a standard variable tariff. But we aren't on a standard tariff at the moment. We're on Octopus Agile. And we've averaged around 20 pence per kilowatt hour over the time that we're looking at here over the last nine and a half weeks. So our costs for heating and hot water have been around 147 pounds, 50 pounds cheaper than an efficient gas boiler, which is great. Okay, so that's how the heat pumps performed this autumn. How does it compare to last year? Well, we need to really need to consider, compare like for like in terms of the weather last year. And if we consider the weather last year um, using the metric of degree days, which are something that helps us understand how much heat we needed for a day or a week or a month or a year. Um, and I explain a little bit about degree days in a video that I did last year that I'll put up somewhere here. But this year there were 420 degree days over that period of time. Whereas last year where we live, there were 348 degree days over that same period. So there are 20% more heating degree days year on year. So you could say that it was 20% colder this year or that we needed 20% more heat to get the same comfort um, because of the weather this year. So we should have used 20% more energy for heating for the same comfort. We actually only used 16% more heat this year. Um, and last year we were running at a slightly lower efficiency of 3.65 over that period of time. So we used 16% more heat, but we only used 13% more electricity this year. So the degree days suggest that it was a colder autumn overall, 
we delivered more heat, we used more electricity, but we also had a higher efficiency this year compared to last by a whopping 3%. Okay, that's not that much. But if we go back two years to the first year of, of the heat pump being uh, uh, commissioned, um, 2023 this year was 18% more efficient than two years ago in 2021. So yeah, things just keep getting better. And that's probably because of the tinkering that we've done, uh, the lessons we've learned and the things that we've learned with our heat pump as, as we've been using it. I'm probably not going to do that much more tinkering from now on. I feel fairly settled with our settings. So I don't think we're likely to get much more efficiency in the future unless we upgraded radiators or we reduced heat loss with substantial insulation so that we could reduce the heat pump flow temperatures. We don't have any plans at the moment, but we'll see. We'll see. I may end up wanting to tinker even further. So this autumn, our heat pump has been 376% efficient or a copper 3.76, and it saved us around 50 pounds versus the standard gas tariff and a really efficient gas boiler. What would that have saved in terms of CO2? This is the metric that I really care about. And this is the reason why really we should all be moving to heat pumps. Um, so even though I'm on a 100% renewable energy tariff, I'm gonna use the average CO2 intensity for the grid in the UK, because that's how we report emissions. So for our 736 kilowatt hours of electricity this autumn, we've emitted 154 kilograms of CO2. If we had delivered the same heat with a 95% gas boiler, then we would have emitted 533 kilograms of CO2, 378 kilograms more. And the heat pump will get lower and lower emissions as the grid continues to decarbonize. And, and hey, that's the great thing about electrifying heat or electrifying transport or electrifying anything. First of all, there are higher efficiencies for electrification, a heat pump running at 300% efficiency or 376 or 8% efficiency that for us over the autumn means that we're just using that much less energy across uh, to provide the same heat. And an electric vehicle is similar. If you look at their, their equivalent miles per gallon in terms of energy, they're using so much less energy than a petrol or diesel vehicle. So if we electrify things, we get more efficiency. But also the way the grid is decarbonizing every time we install a solar panel or a wind turbine, every time one of those is commissioned, the grid will con continue to decarbonize. Year on year, we should see a drop in emissions linked to electricity, which means that my heat pump or an electric vehicle that, that someone might have out on the road will be getting lower and lower emissions every year. And, and simply using less fossil gas or petrol or diesel means that we have a step change in emissions and we'll continue to lock in further reductions for the next 10 to 15 years, as long as the grid keeps decarbonizing. And the hope is that by 2035, the grid will be very, very low carbon. So every kilowatt hour of electricity that you use will have a really a, a meaningless impact in terms of uh, CO2 emissions. So heat pumps in the autumn, they work really, really well. Now it's got cold again, um, we will be using more electricity and I will give you an, a heat pump update for this winter, for 23, 24 winter in a couple months time. Yes, it'll be using more electricity, but so would a gas boiler to keep your house warm when it gets cold outside. So let's be clear, heat pumps are working in a home in the northeast of England. And heat pumps either in uh, uh, one by one homes or in district heat networks or other forms of electric heating that's the only way we have to decarbonize heat today. We can't wait for something new in the future that may or may not exist. We should deploy heat pumps or other forms of electric heating as soon as we can. So for us this autumn, our heat pump means that there is 378 kilograms CO2 less in the atmosphere and 50 pounds less on our bills. And yes, I am smug and warm sat in a t-shirt, even though this weekend it's below zero and snowy outside. Thanks so much for tuning into uh, this video today. If you wanted to look at getting a free heat pump quote, please do look at the link below from the eco experts who could link you up with an installer. And please do get in touch with any questions, any comments you have about how we run our heat pump or how the heat pump is working for us this autumn and winter.